This video tutorial introduce you to the basic components of Image 2 Punch graphical user interface. First of all, you need to know that Image 2 Punch is computer aided design software that is used to generate custom perforated pattern based on any digital image document. Firstly, you need to use an image as the input. Then you modify the image and specify the perforated pattern parameter. If you happy with the result, you can then save it in DXF file format. Please note that DXF is the native file format for Autodesk's AutoCAD software. Autodesk, AutoCAD are registered trademarks or trademarks of Autodesk Incorporated in the USA and or other countries. Let's now we run Image 2 Punch by clicking the icon. Image 2 Punch software interface inherits the standard interface of Windows application. Therefore, you can resize, move the window, minimize or maximize the application Windows interface. Image 2 Punch consists of four main group or body. The first is the menu group, the second is the toolbar group, the third is the navigator panel and the last is the document view or screen. The document view will only come up if a document is open. The document can be a project file or an image. Let's now we open an existing image. All of the components of image 2 punch can be detached to make floating or it can be attached to the side of panel as well as to move them around. The toolbar can also be hide and reposition either to the top or bottom of the window or to the side of window. Let's now arrange the tool according to what I want for this tutorial. We can also create a new image document. Click the file, then click the new menu item. Then, a new image dialog box will open. In here, you can specify the size, the background color, as well as the image file name. When this is done, click OK button. Whenever we open a document file or create a new image file, the navigator bar will always be in the imaging phase or imaging mode, and the document view will also show the original image. In this imaging mode, there are four subgroups in the navigator bar where you can find many filters and tool to draw, edit, or to manipulate the image. The purposes of this imaging mode is to allow you to prepare or modify the image so it will give the best perforated pattern result. The first group in this imaging mode is drawing tool. You can draw some predefined basic shapes like circle, rectangle, text, or polygons. You can also define the color of the shapes, the thickness of the shape outlines, and so on. The rest of the groups are for image manipulation. They are image adjustment group, pixel manipulation group and pixel dislocation group. If you want to do partial image manipulation, you can either use circle select tool or rectangular select tool. This selection tool can be accessed in navigator bar and also in the viewing toolbar. In doing so, first click the selection tool, then draw the region, then click the filter that you want to use. In this example, I will use invert filter. Now let's click or select the existing image document that is already open. Let's apply few image filter to this document in random fashion. In case you want to undo the filter, you can click the undo button. In order to bring back the original image, you can always click the revert button in the file menu to revert the image. Before we are going to tooling mode, I just apply equalization filter. Sometimes this filter can make the perforated pattern result better. Let's now click the tooling tab to go to the tooling generation phase. When we are in this mode, the navigator interface will change to the tooling mode. You can see that there are five group in the navigator bar. The first group is where we will select the tool based on two modes. The first one is the laser tooling mode. This tooling mode is perfect to you 
If you want to use CNC profile cutting machine when manufacturing the perforated pattern sheet. If you want to select the tool in this mode, please click the Select Tools button. Then a Selection Tool dialog box for tooling mode will be open. The first thing is, you need to select the tool shape from the predefined shape. As you select each shape, the icon on the lower right bottom area will be changing to the shape you have selected. The dimension parameter will also reflect to the shape you have selected. You only need to specify the minimum dimension and the maximum. You also need to specify the number of tools that you will be using for the pattern. The angle rotation will be normally specify as zero, which is a default value. Let us we select a circle or round shape. Then we use three millimeters as the minimum diameter and using 10 millimeter as the maximum diameter. We also select 10 as the total tool to be used for this setting. Press the OK button if complete. Now we select the other mode by pressing the button. This second mode is the punch tooling mode. This mode is aimed to those who will be using turret punch press CNC tooling to manufacture the perforated pattern sheet. Now we click the select tool and it will open the tooling dialog for tooling mode. The tooling selection dialog box is totally different from the laser mode tooling. In here, we need to specify the tool, one by one. Please select add single button to add the tool. When the tool selector dialog box open, there will be 20 group of tooling type. The first one is the round tool. And the last one is the custom tool. For the custom tool, you need to import a shape from a DXF file. For other tool types, they are predefined shapes in the tooling database library. Let's click the round tool group. Then click the round R3, the tool to be added into the tool selection. If we want to add some more tools, we just need to repeat the process. If the tool already exists in the selection, a warning will be given. If the tool selection complete, we just need to close the dialog box. We also need to specify the minimum clearance gap. This gap is the minimum distance between the two holes, which is a very important for the perforated pattern design. The minimum gap should not be smaller than the material thickness. In this case we specify as 3 mm for minimum distance. Now we go to explore the second group. This is the perforated pattern type group. In this group we will select the perforated pattern that we want. Click the first button to open the dialog box. When the dialog box open, we can see that there are eight type of perforated pattern that we can choose. The first one is rectangular pattern, then angle pattern, then circular, then spiral, random pattern 1, Random Pattern 2, Stippling Pattern 1, and Stippling Pattern 2. The first four pattern types are a uniform distance pattern. This means that the spacing between each two to another will be in same distance, or in the same format from center to center. For the rest of the pattern, it will have a various and random distance from one tool to another. In this tutorial, let us use the angel pattern with 60 degree angle. The next button in this group will give you an option whether the pattern will be proportional to the image size or it will need to follow the sheet size. If the strengthening option is selected, the pattern result will be strength to follow the sheet size. Please have a look the demonstration as in this video. Let's go to the third group. This group is the input data calculation. In this group, we will specify how we are going to use the image pixel or color to calculate the perforated pattern. We can select either using a single pixel for calculation or a neighboring pixels, which sometimes will make a smoother pattern the final result. Then, click the pixel calculation button. The dialog box for pixel calculation is open. Then, we can select for any other option except the last one. The last one can only be used with a specific punch data range option. Among other options, the luminance and the averaging value 
will be the most recommended. These two options will give a better overall result for perforated pattern. However, you can still use the other option. And it is better to do try and error and to see the result outcome for each of these parameters. For this video tutorial, we will select the luminance option. Now, we need to click the punch data range in the data range classification group. As soon as you click the button, the dialog will pop up. In here you can select any of the options. All of the options are about how to use the characteristic of the tool to be connected with the pixel value of the image. We can use the equal spacing priority where the color range of the image will be divided in an equal value range to be matched up with the tool base on its priority in the list or the option where we can use the diameter and tool area to be related to the pixel color. In short, the most common option that will be used for generating the pattern is option 1. However, the last option is used if you want to use the tool color to be related to the pixel color. Again the best way to understand each of these options is just to try and see the pattern result. Finally, we are now to the last group. In this group. We will specify the sheet size. Please click the button to open the sheet size dialog box. In this dialog box, we can specify the width, the height, and the thickness of the sheet. We can also specify the border for each side. In this case, I will put 1 mm all around. We can also select the material by clicking the button. Then a dialog box will come up and you can select the material to be used by double clicking. If everything good, you need to click OK button. Now, we have completed in selecting or specifying all the parameters for the perforated pattern. The last thing that we need to do is to click the generate button on the bottom of the navigator bar. After you click it, you can then see the result of the pattern. In order to give you a better quality for checking, you can magnify, panning, and use the zooming window view capability. You can also use pattern viewing option to see the pattern in different mode. At the current time, we generate the pattern based on the tooling mode. Now, we select the laser mode, then click generate to see the result. If you want to see the parameter information, you can click the report button. Then print it if you want to. You can see the print view of the pattern image as well. By clicking the button, you can also print it too. Next, you can also save the perforated pattern as an image. Then specify the image size and file type as well as the image name. And click save to export the image. A message box will come up after saving complete. From here, you can also change the parameters to whatever you want. I will make a quick change to try random parameter setting, then generate based on it. If you happy with the result, you can save it as a DXF file. So, this is the basic procedure to create a pattern from an image and save it to a DXF file. This is the end of the video. I am hoping this will provide you a good information.